Hey there, welcome to Story Man's World of Discovery. I'm Story Man. And I'm Story Woman. We're so glad you joined us today. Yeah, we've got some cool things to show you. We are going to see a little baby bee being born, just coming into the world for the first time. It's yeah. so cute. And then we're also going to visit our friends David and Aaron, and we're going to see how the beekeepers get all that honey out of the hive. It's a lot of work. Yeah, I was always curious how beekeepers did that, and I had a feeling it must be a tricky process. Yeah, so we're going to see how clever some of these beekeepers are. And then, uh, so we just hope that you'll like this video. Give it a thumbs up. That'd be great. Subscribe to our channel, yeah. and also hit that bell for the next videos. Hey, so let's get started. Now as this newly born honeybee emerges from her comb, look at how she's greeted by the other bees. They are also making sure that she smells right and that she belongs. As this young bee gets orientated, right, she, the other bees come to her and give her instruction. So today we're out here to harvest our honey and we're going to start by pulling frames off of these hives from the honey supers, which are these smaller boxes on top. Um, the bottom two boxes are the brood boxes. The bees keep that for their winter stores. That's also where their eggs are. I think we're about to get some rain here. So we're going to go through these top boxes on each hive and we're going to see what frames are full of honey and are capped. We only want to harvest honey from capped frames. The capped indicates that the bees have dehydrated the honey enough so that the water volume is low. Um, from there, we'll take the frames, we'll drive the bees out using what's called a fume board and it has a chemical that you put on the fume board that the bees don't like. It's an all-natural mineral that the bees don't like the smell of. You put it on here, the sun hits the black board and heats it up, causing the chemical reaction to create fumes. The fumes drive the bees down from the top honey super down to the next super. So we'll put this lid on here. The bees will smell it. They'll start going down into this one. Then we can pull this honey super off. Once we pull this honey super off, we can go through the frames and find which ones are ready to be harvested. So we're loading this smoker and the goal is to almost smother the fire out. And that keeps the smoke thick and starving for oxygen and it'll be thick white smoke. These are pine needles. Pine needles have the pine sap and resin left in them, and even though it's all dried out, the combination of the two make it really, really easy to light for the fuel. So that's the outer cover, and this is the inner cover. And you can hear the propolis. They've got that lid glued on tight, 
with propolis to seal it up from any pests or air getting in or out. We've got bees in that box. We'll smoke a little between the frames, drive them down, we'll put the fume board on. That'll drive them down even further. And we wait a few minutes, the bees will come down from this box and go down into the second box. Then we can pull this box off and start inspecting the frames. This, this has got a lot of honey in it. Good. This sucker is you got a lot of weight to it. Oh yeah. Just gonna oh, yeah. This. yeah. Let me move that over. Ready? So that probably came from clover. Yeah. So dark, these are both brand new frames this year. So you can tell by the wood and the wax. The comb is new and this the honey is new. Earlier in the spring. Yeah. So this is most likely clover. And this is a variety of other nectar that produces the lighter honey. Clover and buckwheat produce dark honey. They taste different. I think the darker honey is a little richer flavor. Um, yeah, so we use these nine frame separators in our hives and that allows them to, to draw it out a little bit deeper, a little bit wider, and you get a little bit more honey per because it's, it's drawn out more. So um, studies have shown that nine frames will actually produce a slight bit more honey than 10 frames. And so these metal spacers allow us to evenly space every frame out and it gives them the same amount of perfect space on every one. So as we harvest the honey, uh, we'll take samples from the honey and put it on a refractometer and check the water volumes throughout the, the, the harvesting process to make sure all of our capped honey is at the levels that we want it. If your water volumes are too high, your honey will begin to ferment, you know, wild yeast in the air and, and all that. But as long as the water content is low enough, it can't ferment and it will literally last forever. When I say forever, they found honey in the Egyptian tombs that was still edible. <laughs> there, there are different ways of dehydrating the honey yourself. Um, some people will put it in the bucket or they'll put it in a tray and put it in the refrigerator or something like that to allow it to dehydrate. Um, but to me, nature tells you when it's time to harvest the honey, that's when it's capped. The bees know what they're doing. They've been doing it for a while. So we just let them make the choice and then we harvest what's ready to be harvested. I have tested capped honey versus uncapped honey before with my refractometer. And I mean, without a doubt, the bees cap it at almost exactly the right time. And the honey that is uncapped is, has too high of a water volume. This is what you would normally see in a brood box around some eggs. And there was the development of a queen cup. So they were thinking about making a new queen at that point. We don't use queen separators in our hives. We just allow them to naturally stay where they're gonna stay. And occasionally the queen may migrate up into one of the honey supers and start putting some We've eggs in there. Yeah. So there's brood right there. So there's a bunch of bee babies yet to be born. And that's why they've got pollen stored around them and honey so they can feed them. <coughs> About over smoked me. I'm only a smoker a few days out of the year. That is where the queen lays her eggs and that's where they store most of their pollen and all of their winter honey stores. And these are all medium honey supers.
So um, something happened during our harvest process that we really don't want to happen, but it's exciting that you're getting to capture it on video. So what happened was one of the honey supers had brood in it and that indicated that the queen might have been in that honey super. So we looked for her, we couldn't find her, and pretty soon there's a swarm of bees up in the air. So we knew the queen was run off from that hive. And so the colony knows the queen is not in the box, so they start leaving also. We see them all swarming around in the air. The queen lands on the limb, and pretty soon the rest of the colony smells her, and they'll start forming a ball around her. And this is a swarm and something you would normally see in the winter. But since we've disrupted them, um, they've gone to this today, what we'll try to do is give them a chance to ball up around her and then we'll get a box and we'll try to drop them back into a box and then set them up in a hive again. So hopefully we haven't lost it since it landed so close. So if you remember uh, in the first episode, we caught a swarm that was on this tree and we shook it off into this uh, deep box here. Well, since then we've added another deep box and these are the two boxes that always stay for the bees. So these are the brood boxes and this is where they put their winter stores. It's now in July and normally we wouldn't put a super on this late but we've got some supers that are almost finished off and we decided to go ahead and throw one on this hive because it's it's pretty strong if you take a peek in here and um, you'll be able to see they've got both of these deep boxes completely filled out and they're ready for some more room we probably won't get to harvest any honey off of this uh, colony this year but um, we are going to go ahead and throw a honey super on there and see what happens in the next few weeks so We've got a honey super here, and this has mostly drawn out comb on it, and it has some honey already in it. It's just not capped. So there's drawn out comb, no honey. And if we don't get any honey off of it, at least they'll get some reserves off of it for themselves. Here we are today in day two of our extraction process. And today, yesterday, we grabbed all the frames off the hives that were ready to be harvested. And today we, we have had them stored in the hot room, my garage. And um, we're gonna go through and extract all the honey from the hives. This is our extractor. Um, this extractor holds 20 frames. It, you slide the frames in and the extractor spins and it forces the honey to come out. So one thing I'll talk about with that extraction process, the frame sits in the hive in this orientation. And because of this, gravity is pulling down. The bees actually draw the comb down like this and like that. So it's almost like a V shape. And that keeps the honey from running out before it's uh, fully dehydrated and capped by the bees. And so when we put the frame in the extractor, it goes in this way. The extractor is spinning and forces the honey to come out the way that it's sitting in. And so that's how the centrifugal force draws the honey to the outside. The honey runs down the extractor and then it comes out the valve. From there, the honey will go through a double stainless steel filter. Now this is a five gallon bucket. Aaron and David were able to get six of these today. That's 30 gallons of honey. 
amazing. So we've been harvesting honey today and we want to show a little bit about color differences and clarity and uh, these are some honeys that we've harvested over the last couple of years and this is a, a light honey and this is an amber or a medium and then this is a very dark honey and depending on what type of flowers and pollen that are available to the bees that's how the honey comes out so just to show you another example this is what we've harvested today so this is probably going to be on this end of the spectrum and there's actually a gauge you can hold your honey next to and determine you know what color your honey is but I would call this uh, a light an amber and a dark So once again, we have to thank Aaron and his father-in-law, David, for having us out to follow up on the swarm we caught the first week we were here. And then this amazing day we had harvesting honey and how much we've learned about the different colors of honey and what it takes to get different shades of honey, the, the award-winning honey, by the way. And so once again, we're thanking them both for everything they've done to help us learn more about bees and being a beekeeper. So last year, David and Aaron entered the honey competition at the Tulsa Fair and they came in first place for color and for taste. And considering the work they put into this, it's no wonder that they did. So listen, we hope you enjoyed this video. And we, again, we hope you like and subscribe and click that little notification bell down below so you get notified for our next videos. And also, if you want to order some of my Storyman books, just click on that link below. And again, as always, remember, the world is an amazing place because you're in it.